Shavua Tov. I want to get started because I want to um, cover a number of things um, about Purim, uh, partially halacha and partially the sort of mood of the Purim, which I think influences the halacha in a very, very deep way. Um, and let's start with the combination that the, um, the first halacha is Mishanichnas Adar Marbin Basimcha. So Adar comes in, that's Friday. Mishanichnas Adar, this past Friday, Marbin Basimcha. You have to be happy. I, I find this to be um, a, a, a difficult halacha. Not because I'm particularly depressed, maybe. <laughs> But I don't know, I'm, I'm not 100% clear um, what it means. What does it mean exactly? For, for example, by contrast, um, in Hilchas Tishabov, it says, Mishanichnas of Mimat in the Simcha. So as of comes in, you reduce your Simcha. And it means every single day you get a little bit more upset, a little bit more depressed. So we're all good at that. That's not a, that's not a difficult thing to do. Somehow, somehow we know naturally how to do that. Um, but there, there's rules. There's very clear rules as to how to do it. You, you, um, you, how you mamayit besimcha. Don't go swimming, don't do laundry, uh, don't buy new things, don't get married. All kinds of things that are mamayit besimcha. And it's interesting that here the Shulchan Aruch says, Mishanichnas adar mimar bin besimcha, no rules. No rules. It doesn't give us any hagdaras. I suppose um, we naturally know how to be, be happy. Um, maybe, maybe. But I think that what's important here is to define happiness, and this is really a halachic issue, because if we're not happy, then we're missing the whole halacha of the month and the whole spirit of, the, of Purim, and both the law and the spirit of the whole ador is gone if we're not happy. So is everybody happy? Okay. One or two, I say. Oh, so schnapp. You're going to have schnapps, so stop. <laughs> Nothing stops the women of my house, I can tell you. <laughs> but, the, the, um, no, but, but, but you bring up a very good point, because what, what everybody knows about Purim and about happiness, and by the way, again, it starts from now, it doesn't start from Purim, is drinking. That's what everybody knows. And that's not made up. That's not shtuyot. Uh, that's a real thing. Chayev adam libesume bepuria. A person should get to a certain level of drunkenness on Purim. Um, other than the issues of tznius, this is probably true for men and for women, actually. I don't think there's any, there's no distinction in, in halacha between men and women. So a little, a certain level of drunkenness. And by the way, it doesn't mean there's a lot of, if you look in halacha in the Gemara, there's a lot of different levels of drunkenness. It's not like one thing, you're drunk or you're not drunk. You know, are you drunk? You know, it's, you know if we want to be real from on Purim, we should walk around with a breathalyzer and to find out if we're drunk enough, you know, if I reach the shear, you know. But, but it's, there's, for instance, like there's shikrusa shalait, the Gemara speaks about that. There's as drunk as Lot was, you know, Lot. Um, so then you're not allowed to daven. There's all kinds of levels of, of, um, sh- of shikr. Um, here, the, the level is Adulayada ben Baruch Mordechai, I'm already drunk, the Baruch Mordechai, the Aroham, Ar Mordechai, Baruch Haman, you get mixed up there. Um, okay, what does that have to do with being happy? Because you get mixed up between, you know, between Mordechai and Haman, that makes you happy? There's nothing, there's nothing happy walking around in a, so maybe like you get drunk, you forget your tsaris, maybe that's what it means, but what, I'm really after the depth, before I even begin, I'm, I'm really after the depth of happiness, and by the way, not just me, but the whole world is after the depth of happiness. Uh, if you'll go to uh, um, India or Tibet, they're all looking for nirvana and uh, enlightenment and happiness. Everybody wants to be happy. They have different words for it. Some are Indian words. Some are uh, Hindi words. There are there are a lot of uh, we we have a Torah. We don't need to do that. So the Torah is supposed to tell us how to be happy. How important it is to be happy. Um, the Torah says that the whole klala that, that comes, God forbid, on Bnei Yisrael is tachas. Because <laughs> we weren't happy. 
So tell us, please, what is happy. That's the, there should be a pasuk, a dinan shulchanar, something that tells us what, what happiness is. You know, I'm, I'm thinking that um, it's so undefined because, um, you know, if you're as old as I am, so you remember there used to be like Snoopy cards every day. Happiness is, you know, <laughs> you know, happiness is taking a nap in the middle of the day. Happiness is all kinds of things that are, that are that none of those things obviously um, define happiness. So um, some people, and, and this happiness, I believe, and this is why I'm, not just because I want everyone to be happy, I don't understand that from, what, what, this is what, the, what Judaism really has to offer the world, because the, the, the um, tachlis, what everybody wants in life is to find that place of happiness, and people are going to all kinds of places. They're going to, um, some go to therapy, that's good, some go to India, that's another thing, like people, people do all kinds of things, they drugs, to be happy, drink to be happy. But what is it? What are you supposed to do um, to be besimcha? That's the question. What, is it, what does it really mean? Um, and uh, I always say this, and I'm not joking. I'd like to explain it al pi Kabbalah to make it easier. Um, sometimes, you know, there are things that are like a little bit deeper, but they make it easier to understand than everybody here is uh, qualified, not, not to get uh, nervous. but. Um, let me, let me explain the, uh, the following, very, very basic. You'll find this in the uh, Hagdama of the Arizal, in the Hagdama of Reb Chaim Vital. Um, they're not speaking about happiness per se, but they're speaking about connection. Connection, connection between Hashem, the higher worlds, and this world. Let me say before I even explain this connection, that if one's connected, one's happy. If one's not connected, one is not happy. You can be disconnected at many of the places. <laughs> there are many places to disconnect. And that's where the Kabbalah gives us great detail as to this connection. It's called, in Hebrew, it's called hiskashrus, hitkashrut. So I'm, I'm like here I am in this world, and I'm, I'm here. Um, I eat, I sleep, I walk, I work, I do whatever I do in this world. And there's Hashem in that world. Where is the connection come in? There has to be a connection because the whole world, is a, this is what the Arizal says, the whole world was created. Uh, mankind was created. You were created. I was created just to be connected. Why? Because this is Hashem creating the world to extend his light into the, wor into the world. So we need to be the source or let's say a receptor and then a source, first a receptor and then a source of simcha, of or. Yehudim haisa oira v'simcha, right? V'sasa, v'kar, or and simcha, they go together. So what, here's, here's the uh, Kabbalah of happiness. The Kabbalah of happiness is that Hashem um, kivyachal emits a light. It's called the Kav. And he wants, he created a world because he wants his godliness to be in this world. And he created us, not just Stam, but B'Tselem Elohim, because he wants us to radiate that godliness. If all that is happening, then we're happy. If there's a disconnect, and, and I'm not, a, I'm not a, um, a psychiatrist, I'm not a therapist, I'm nothing like that, um, but I do know this, that so much um, depression and so much even, um, I know this because I was, I was taught it. I'm not, no, I'm not saying a theory. So much depression and so much, even schizophrenia, comes from disconnect. Disconnect from reality. Um, that's one place to disconnect. <laughs> from, I'm not connected to reality. Or I'm too much in reality and, and I'm not part of anything bigger or anything higher or anything holier. And I'm not connected to the purpose. My purpose, if I'm not connected, what am I doing here? If I'm not doing, if I don't know what I'm doing here, if I don't know why I was created, if I don't know why I'm, I'm living and walking this earth, so how can you be happy? So happiness, now this, this um, you know, um, a shot of schnapps doesn't take care of. <laughs> it's not a, uh, it might make you feel better, but it, and so we need to understand the halacha of what, that, what that's all about. But you know, little children are happy. Little children running the streets, they're happy, they're laughing, they, they seem happy. Whatever happy means, they seem happy. Like, um, what's, what justifies their happiness? Why are they allowed to be happy? They don't know Kabbalah. 
<laughs> Are they happy? They're not worried about anything. Simple as that. <laughs> because they're connected. They're connected because they haven't yet disconnected. You know, um, children are honest until we teach them how to lie. Uh, children are happy until we teach them how to be unhappy. Children don't worry about anything. Everything is there for them. Everything is given to them until we teach them how to worry. So all of the things that, that stop, um, that disconnect, are things which disconnect us from Hashem. And this is, this is um, incidentally, I'm telling you, um, I think a synopsis of 15 chapters of the Nefesh HaChaim in Sharbeis. I'm telling you chapter 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 of the Tanya. This is all he's talking about, about this. I'm telling you what the Hakdom of the Arizal says. It's all about Hit Kashrut. And I believe that Purim, is all about this Kesher. And I think the Kesher, if I'm connected, let me, let me um, say this, if I'm connected from the Shemayim to the arts, like Yaakov's ladder, you know, up and down, so then um, not only am I happy, but I'm able to make other people happy. And I'm able to give, and I'm able to love. And I'm able, if I could be loved, I'm loved, I can love. You know, this is the, this is, and, and most important, that the Arizal says, is I'm able to have, listen to the, such a chiddush, the genius of the Arizal, or the Rocha Kiddush, or whatever it was. I'm able to have gratitude. A person who's not connected cannot get up in the morning and say, Moda ani lefonecha. Or he can't say to anybody around them, Toda Raba, which is the same thing. Because if, I, if I'm, if I'm, not, if I'm living just here in my own little place, I don't want to acknowledge anything outside of me. <laughs> I don't want to acknowledge that Hashem created me. It's only that, that, it's only that connection which allows me to, to, to have gratitude. So gratitude is very interesting. That's why we start the day with modan ilafanecha. And we say, Shmon Esrei, modim anach mulach. Gratitude is, is the sign. That's like the sign of you see people like Yeshiva Bakr when they're drunk, they're very nice sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but they're always, whatever, you know, there's people I don't hear from all year round. And then they come to my house on Purim drunk. Oh, you're the greatest. You're wonderful. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> like, you know. So, uh, okay, thank you. I mean, they're expressing gratitude because somehow or another, I think what all the, all the, um, the, the yayin can do is relieve some of the worry and relieve some of the, if we're worried, so that means that there's something that we don't believe in Hashem about. We've got to lose the worrying. Like, what's the worriers? There are people that are worriers. It's a, it's a, it's a habit. I'm not exempt from any of these things, by the way. I'm just, just, just saying <laughs> that's all that, that, that people are worriers. Um, so the Chovas Havavas says, if you worry, you don't have a on Hashem. If you worry, you don't have a on Hashem. So here, here, when the Torah says, Mishnich Nas Adar, Marbin Basimcha. So what it means to say is that, that the way to start the whole Purim is to be Basimcha. And it has to be a very real Simcha and a very, very deep Simcha. And it can be achieved through Tfila. It can be achieved through, I believe you could reverse engineer it and achieve it through gratitude. Um, if you if you find yourself, if you like do this, I don't, this is about Purim, I don't want to um, give a schmooze here, but I just want to say something here. That, um, something that my Rebbe, Zecher Tzadik Levracha, um, taught us, uh, I'm talking now 40 years ago, but it's still good, <laughs> it didn't, didn't expire. Um, he, he said, you know, if you, if, you, if you, in the morning, you could do this like when you daven, or you could do this before you daven, you know, like according to why you're drinking your coffee, whatever you want. But when you daven in the morning, or in the morning, um, if you come up, he said, or, he, he, he taught us this, he said this all the time, if you can come up with three things, three, three things that happened the day before that were just excellent. <laughs> they were just wonderful things. And there's rules to this. You can't say the same ones you said two days ago. <laughs> That's because that, and it has to be new, let's say once a year, <laughs> you can come up with the same thing. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but something that made you happy. So it's interesting because here's like a lot of things. Here's something I heard and I learned when I was maybe 17 years old. 
and I didn't start doing it until I was about 55. Um, but it's, it's a life changer. It's a, it's a life changer in terms of focusing in, having gratitude for three things, you know, and sometimes, you know, you have to rack your brains because it doesn't feel like anything so great happened. But there's always something. You work it out and you have the three things. Um, I sometimes have to skip Carbonus because of this because I'm just working very hard on this. But it's, it's a game changer. It, it changes everything. And then it's not just that we're happy. Everyone wants to be happy. We're connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I want to um, burden you for a moment. You know, the Archus Tzadikim, <laughs> is a simple safer, meaning it tells us simple, I don't mean that it's simple over, over but it's an easy safer. It's, a, it's not a safer which is complicated. It's not a book of Kabbalah. It's not a book of uh, deep halacha. It's not Reb Chaim Brisker. It's a book of, uh, it goes through the different midos like um, Zrizus and, you know, there's, there's a list of Zrizus and Kas and Av and Avzorius, um all kinds of things, and he tells us how to do it. MS. So he has a shar of simcha. It's a very easy read, the Archa Siddiquim, except for this paragraph. <laughs> except, and I'm going to just read it to you. If you, if you catch the, I'll, I can translate a little bit for you, but he talks about the definition of simcha. It's in shar ha simcha. Shar ha simcha. Simcha hi tiferes ha neshama. Okay, did we already lose everybody? <laughs> So you know what it means, and here's it means as follows: It means that you know what are we? We are nefesh, ruach, neshama. You're aware, <laughs> nefesh, nefesh. Well, first your body, and then nefesh, and ruach, and then neshama. And then there's more, <laughs> chaya, yechida, until you get to Hashem. There's a whole. Uh, think of it as the um, the vertebrae on on the spine. Now, there's more that's connecting the head to the. To, to your feet. There's a lot of stuff. So neshama, like, most people are not really connected to their neshama. And certainly not to the, their shorish on neshama, which is even higher. Uh, my goof is connected to my nefesh. So that, that's all about uh, how do I feel and mindfulness. And that's, that's a very beginner's, that's beginner's, you know, mindfulness is for amateurs. Um, but you, if you want to go deeper and you want to go higher, so then you have to get to the ruach. Ruach has to do with your breathing and with your speaking and what makes us alive. You're, you're alive because of your Ruach. The definition of death, according to Halacha, is you're not breathing. It has nothing to do with your brain. It has nothing to do, it has to do with, um, with your functionality, with your pleasure in life. Breathing, that's, that's life. So that's your Ruach. And then there's the Neshama. It's so, it's so hidden. But the Neshama, the thing about the Neshama is that's where the connection starts to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So um, every, every one of these parts... So, um, simcha, when is a person with simcha? He tiferes ha neshama. It's the tiferes, it's the perfection of the neshama. When the neshama is going in the right way, when you're connected to the neshama, that's what he says. She is boyer, but tiferes ha simcha, asher tismach v'alikim. Just going to read a little bit. V'tav hik zik, v'tav hik, shine. Ziv yirasa lahavik yikar hoita. That the, that the kav, the light that comes from Hashem, this does not sound like an Archa Sadiqim. I, I'm just keep on saying this because it's so fascinating to me. Like he, he, he became so um, sublime to, in order to, to understand Simcha that the, that the light from the Shemayim is, flow, is flowing through us. So you know what happiness is? He goes on to explain, like imagine, at least in a spiritual way, that um, I'm plugged in and I'm lit up. <laughs> I'm all lit up. Can you imagine that? I take out the plug, <laughs> plug it in, lit up. So lit, the plug plugged into the Shemayim, and Ad Kedekach, that it actually, this aura goes right through me, and then I'm Basimcha. So what are we meant to do on Purim? Purim, we have to get to that level of Simcha and do whatever it takes to get there. But besides for the drinking part of it, that's what we're going to learn. There's halachas of giving. A lot of giving has to be done, sometimes taking has to be done. Um, I'd love to read this whole chapter with you, but we're going to run out of time. But it's just, if you want to look at it, it's just beautiful. It's in Shar HaSimcha, Arthur So, uh, given, given that um, principle, the pleasure principle, <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the halachas, first of all, and get through it um, with the backdrop of, of Simcha, because it's all about Simcha. So first, first halacha, 
the second halacha, first halacha is to be besimcha, the second halacha, um, which is a halacha that um, I have a hard time with and, uh, until I really chopped it, until I understood it. So the first halacha takes place before Purim, which is this coming Shabbos, which is the halacha of remembering, never forgetting how much we hate Amalek. If necessary, kill them. Not just them, but their children, their animals, their goldfish, everything. Pop, 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 down the drain. <laughs> we hate Amalek. Thank God we don't have, can't do this mitzvah because we have no idea who Amalek is. So we don't really um, walk around killing people. But it, does, it sounds, um, I mean, I'm just being very honest here, very straight. It sounds like a hard mitzvah. Not like, what are we, what are we uh, hating? And, like, what's, the, what's all that about, like the hating? And, Actually, I think at my, uh, at the, at my Shabbos table we spoke about, did I not do we not? We spoke about this a little bit at the Shabbos table, that it's, it, it, it suddenly makes a lot of sense to me. Because the thing, the thing about um, connectivity to Hashem is being able to see things clearly and be sensitive to what's going around you. And what happens is that when we see evil, Amalek was evil, like Nazis. So when we see evil, so when we first see it, it shocks us. Whoa, evil, like get rid of them, eradicate them. And then somehow or another, um, the brain does a trick on us and we get used to it. And we get more used to it, more used to it until it's normal. And this is us, <laughs> this is us. Like we all, we all know, like, uh, even even we, uh, you know, you, you, we first started hearing that people were uh, really uh, innocent people were being killed in the chemical weapons in Syria. Oy vey, how could they do this? The whole world is uh, screaming about How could they do this? Do you hear anybody screaming about it anymore? They're still killing people. They're still doing the same thing. Nobody, nobody says a word about it. Why? Brains got used to it. The brains got used to it. Society got used to it. The world got used to it. And they did the same thing with the Nazis. They just got used to it. Oh, another million Jews? Okay. It's the way it is. The first one was a disaster, I guarantee you. But the second, third, 50th, 100th, 1,000th, it's already a number was, it was almost, um, that's life, you know, that's, a, that's life. So comes the Torah and says, no, once a year, or as it says in the Shulchan Aruch, sometimes two or three times a year, as much as possible. You should remember that evil is evil. And bad is bad. And Haman, as far as Purim goes, Haman's plot was an evil plot. There is no excuse in the world for somebody to try to wipe out a nation wherever they are, to wipe out a group of people. I mean, it's the, it's, it's the ultimate, Haman was a Nazi. It's as simple as that. And so, and Ahasuerus somehow got used to it. And the people got used to it. Everything was okay. Here, one day, they're eating with Suda with them and drinking wine with them and everything is... Everything is chilled, and then, and then the next day, okay, sorry, we've got to kill you. It, it, it worked, and, and if you'll watch, if you'll read the Megillah with a smart eye, it was Haman working very, very, um, uh, in an evil way, little by little, to, to bring this hate onto the people where it became okay. First we'll start with Mordechai, then we'll start, you know, let's do a little by little. Um, little by little, we'll be able to do a genocide. So it becomes... As the light, and this is, by the way, what I'm speaking about is what it means to be a light onto the nations. A light means you're taking the light of Hashem. We don't have to generate the light ourselves. Taking the light from our, of Hashem and generating it around it, radiating it wherever we go. When we walk into a room, everybody walks into a room, the room should become happy. You have to daven for this before you walk into a room. You have to daven. Let me make the room happy. Let me, because this is our tachlis, to take the light of Hashem and bring it out. Part of that light, before that light can even begin, we have to eradicate evil. There's no light when there's evil. There's no light when there's something that's, that, that our brain, the cognitive dissonance of our brain, has gotten so used to that, that we're, so, we're so crooked, our thinking is so crooked, that we don't even recognize evil for what it is. So the, the, it was, the insight here is that I don't want to hate anybody. You don't want to hate anybody. You certainly don't want to kill anybody. And there's all kinds of cool, cool stories about people that kill people because they're a malik. But the, 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 
the, the omek of it is that hate evil. Hate evil. Don't get used to it. Um, and that's how you're a light. That's how you're a light to everyone. How is um, Eretz Yisrael is meant to be a light to all of the nations of the world? If it's not a light, we're not doing our job. So that's the important thing about Amalek. Halachically, interesting, the, um, just uh, halachically, um, the, the, um, the Sefer Achinuch says that everybody has to do this. Everybody has to remember to hate Amalek. Have to remind yourself about it, he says, once, twice, three times a year. And the once, twice, three times a year is Parshas Beshalach, when we learn about the, the whole story of Amalek. Um, Parshas Kiseitze, when where it says, the Chorob al Tishkach, Ezecher Amalek. And, which one? Purim. No, besides for the everyday. But he said two, three times a year, a chiyuv b'tzibur. A chiyuv b'tzibur to do. So says the Sefer Echinuch, and it's a halacha, by the way, that um, we could do this mitzvah all the time. In fact, we should. We should hate evil all the time. So neira. We should hate evil all the time. But the, the Chachamim said, we were, the Chachamim were afraid that we're not going, it's a hard mitzvah, and we're going to somehow push it out of our lives. We want to be full of love and positive energy and all that. So we we're going to push it out of our lives. So the Chachamim said, no, take out a Sefer Torah and read it from the Sefer Torah right before Purim because it's the season and the, and the Megillah's Esther, it says, Nizkarim Vinasim. First, remember to get rid of the evil and then you can first celebrate Purim. So we take out a Sefer Torah, an extra Sefer Torah on the Shabbos before Purim, which is this coming Shabbos, right? This is it's this coming Shabbos, Shabbos before Purim, and we read um, Timcha Zecher Amalek. And according to many, this is a mitzvah, well, it's certainly a mitzvah deraisa, but according to many, it's a chiyuv deraisa. What about women? What about women in this mitzvah? So the Sefer Echinuch says that the Chachamim didn't mean women when he said you have to come to Shul and listen to it with a minion. Um, many say uh, because women can, can get this light, but they don't have to do it with a whole celebration. Many say that because women are not B'nai Muhammad, they're not going to do action, they're not going to run to, to action. So he says, as Machoikis, the, the Rambam and the Sefer Achinuch, two Rishonim, two 12th century um, scholars, whether women have this mitzvah in shul or not. And this argument went all the way down till today, um, where the Minag Yerushalayim this is, uh, is to, um, that all the women go to shul, and they, if they can, and they hear the, the Kriya Satara of Amalek, and the Chazanish says, no, women should stay home. <laughs> so you have a Machlokas, it's actually a Machlokas, Briskarov, and the Chazanish. What about the Saladim? Saladim, also Machlokas. Rabbi Yosef says that for sure they have to hear Amalek. Kafa Chaim, great Sardi, Chaim Falaji. He says, absolutely not. No, you know, so there was different menhagim in different places. Whether in the Vilna Gons world, women never went to shul, period. <laughs> he, he never went to shul. He didn't, he didn't like, I don't know, you know. I think all women should come to shul. I mean, I'm not going to argue with the Vilna Gons, but there are other people that argue with the Vilna Gons. But I, I think it's good to come to shul, I don't know. But, uh, but this, is, this is my focus, and it's the way it worked out. It worked out that the, the minhag Yerushalayim is to go, and the minhag B'nai Brak is not necessarily to go, although, um, I just, yeah, somebody showed me a, um, my son Shalom showed me a letter from Rebetzin, Rebetzin Kanievsky that she said that her, her husband, Reb Chaim Kanievsky, her husband, Reb Chaim Kanievsky, said that my father, who was the stipler and the, what was he, the nephew, the, or the brother in law of the Chazanish, so um, the stipler made his daughters go to Shul here on my life. So, so go to shul, <laughs> go to shul here. I'm all here's a big shemesh, nishta hin, nishta her. You know, does it have, does it have the minhagim of your shulayim? Does it have the minhagim of Nebrak? Does it really have its own minhagim? Um, but the, the correct, the, I think, the, if he, the, the, the works out like this, that if you can, so go. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing to go and do this mitzvah at Zibur and you're behind the Rambam by doing it. And if you can't do it, so um, what to do? So wait till Parshas Kiseitze. And you can, you can hear it then. Um, interesting, a lot of people say, just go to Shul and Purim, because on Purim morning, they read from Parshas B'Shalach, Vayishma Amalek. Vayishma, right, that, in a, that, Vayishma, that they heard, that's where it talks about the actual word, the, the war 
um, with Amalek. But um, the Mishnah Burr says that you're not Makai the Mitzvah by hearing that. It has nothing to do with it. Purim may be here when you clap at Haman every time you clap in Haman, so then you're Makayim the Mitzvah. But the, the, the Mishnah Burr says that listening to that, by Yishma Amalek, the laning of Purim morning, is not Makayim. So it could be, um, you don't have to be Makayim, you're women. Um, men certainly have to be Makayim. It could be, you, you don't have to be Makayim, but if you want to be Makayim, you, you're not Makayim at Purim morning, according to the Mishnah Burr. Purim morning doesn't work. So it says the Mishnah Burr, maybe other people argue with him, but that's what he said. You say but one of them is Tiskar Zechamon. You do it every day. Every day, but no, because the Takana to do the Tzipor. So with the Sefer Torah. So the question is, does the Takana apply to women? That's the, that's the Shaila. So uh, that's the Machlokas. So if it applies to women, so come on Shabbos. Um, here I think they even have a special, we have a special laning afterwards. I don't know why. It was hard to come on time. <laughs> but uh, I guess babysitting and this and that, but, but we, we, try to, we try to accommodate. Uh, everybody should hear. Um, okay, the, um, the halacha of giving on Purim, again, in the spirit of Simcha. So Purim has a different halacha than all year round when it comes to tzedakah. The, the halacha of Purim is, um, as the Shulchan Aruch says, Call Hapoishet Yadai Naisten Lai. Somebody puts out their hand, you give them money. A lot of people learned this halacha. <laughs> so there are thousands of people that are putting out their hand. So you have to, you have to give them. That's the din. Call Hapoishet Yadai Naisten Lai. What that means is, and this is very important, not just for porn, but for all year round. What that means is that usually, usually, the halacha is that you can't take from your tzedakah money and give it to everybody who puts out their hand. It's a mistake. Um, people think it's, it's, like, it's very righteous and they're big tzaddik or tzaddikis for, for, for doing this. It's actually a wrong thing to do, to give everybody who comes for money, money. Because, um, first of all, in Shulchan Aruch, it only says on Purim you're supposed to do this. Meaning that all year round you don't do this. Why? Because the din is that you have to be bodek and ani to make sure that he's really an Oni and he's not a Ramai. That's what it says in Shulchan Aruch, in your Adaya. And if you give a non-Oni tzedakah, so then you're taking away from legitimate causes and legitimate Aniyim. So it's not yours to take away from, from legitimate causes. So it's Gezel Aniyim, Shulchan Aruch. It's actually Gezel Aniyim. It's like going to the Aniyim and stealing money from them. Um, so you can't do it if you want to do it because it's so uncomfortable. Um, somebody comes to your door. And by the way, you know, people say, well, he's been coming to my house for years, so it could be for years he's a Ramai. <laughs> it doesn't mean that, just because he's coming for years, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean that. In fact, an Ani doesn't usually come for, I mean, I, like Baruch Hashem, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not anti-Tzedakah, I'm very pro-Tzedakah. Um, thank, thank God I give away, um, through the course of the year, your money, <laughs> about um, $150,000 to Ani. Hashem, people give me money and I give it away. I try to check. <laughs> try to check as to who you're giving to. So Purim um, has, it's, and it's very, very important. And if you don't know, so go to somebody who does know. Kupashot Tzedakah knows, uh, the Ilman Achai knows. There's people to know, but um, just to, you have to know. Um, by the way, sometimes I check and I end up giving the people much more money because it's really, it really is legitimate. So checking is good for everybody. But Purim is a different halach. So Purim, there's a din of kola poshet yadai noisten love. The reason for that is, as the Mishnah Bura, because when it came Purim and Shushan, Hashem didn't check. <laughs> he didn't do a badika into us to see whether we should get, we should get help or we shouldn't get help. We should be saved from home and we shouldn't be saved from home. Just helped us, he helped us and that was it. So since he just helped us, we just do it. We just give, give, give. Um, you, you can't take it from your Meister money though, unless you know for sure it's an Ani. It's just a din. Kalaposhi yadai nice and like. But you gotta be, you still can't do gezel anim. A. B, there's a mitzvah of matonas lav yonim. And matonas lav yonim is a different halacha. That's not the halacha of kalaposhi yadai nice and like. That's one thing that, that little kids are running around looking for money to so give them something. It could be ten agarot, by the way. It doesn't have to be, <laughs> you could give them whatever. But no snow, you have to give them something. Shouldn't, shouldn't um, hold it for yourself. So take a, take a bunch of money and put it and give it to whoever, 
whoever you think, a shekel, two shekels, that's, that's what that's talking about. But then there's a din, a more serious din, of matanus lev um, which means that you have to find two people that you know for sure, 100% for sure, even more than all year round, that they are evyonim. Evyonim, there's different levels in being poor. And an evyon is one of the worst places to be. Evyon, ani evyon, it's two different things. Evyon, so how, how much, how do, how do you qualify for being an evyon? So um, it's talking about somebody, Rabbi Yoshev um, taught, somebody who um, it, it cannot make it through the month on the money that they're making. And we're not talking about people with some kind of a hole or things that are, you know, drug addicts that are, they can't make it through the month because they have 150,000 shekel expenses. There's, there's a, a written poverty level, I think, um, the, you, know, you could look it up, you can Google it like I can. But um, I, I use that as the Hagdara. But basically anybody who has, I think it's four children and doesn't make 6,000 shekel is poverty. That's an Ani, that's an Evyon. Um, after that, it's a matter of degree. Hard to find real Evyon, actually. It's, uh, yeah, I, I find it hard to find. Um, especially like the Briskarov was worried about that uh, even if they're of Yonim, um, but by, by poor afternoon, they're already got a lot, they already have a lot of money, right? So, so, um, so he would get up at Nets and give, give, find an Evyon and give, give money to make sure that he was an Evyon when he gave him the money. Okay, so um, you could do that. Or um, maybe a better idea, unless you know somebody who's an Evyon, which would be the best thing. Um, is to is to do your research, figure out what you want to do with your money, and give it to them, or give it to somebody who knows Evionim well, somebody who studies this and knows Evionim. That's the um, the two ways to do it. How much to give? So here you have to give enough. Um, here's how the Gemara works. You have to give enough to you have to give to two Evionim, and you have to give enough to make them happy. Here's our happy thing. And how are they going to be happy? So a suda, the Gemara says, if you can give them a suda or enough money for a suda, so then you're giving them simcha on Purim. And that's, that's what we're supposed to do. The, look, the deep thing is that we're taking what we have and we're giving it. That's and the deep thing. The I don't think so. I mean, I think, look, it depends if you know private people. If you know private people, but this is not where you use it for... for uh, um, Gifts for your kids, Rebbe, or things like that, unless they unless they qualify. And Evion means he really can't make it through the month. That's the that's the bottom line. You know, you can't make it through the month, um, and you have to give them enough for a meal. That's that's how much you have to give. How much does a meal cost? Falafel. Okay, very good. That's the Israeli answer. You're living. <laughs> Is that a meal by everybody? A falafel. Yeah. Okay, I don't know, I haven't bought a falafel. How much does it cost? How much is a falafel? 35 shekels. 35 shekels? Really? 30, really? 15 to 20 shekels. 20 shekels? So, okay, so minimum of 20. Here, here is a good thing. But for um, one person, for the family? No, for one person. But for two people, you have matanas of your name. So for two of your name, there could be two of your name in one family. Um, you want to do the mitzvah mahudra, give a hundred times uh, matanas lev yarnim. There's no, there's no limit to how much you're allowed to give. But I'm just saying that if you don't give, um, if you don't give to, uh, to, to two legitimate lev yarnim, you haven't done the mitzvah. So one, one more thing about this is that um, you can give it, you don't have to give it on Purim. Purim sometimes it's very difficult. It's a, it's a balagan, and it's difficult to give on Purim, but, but the ani has to get it on Purim. So the, the thing is that you can give it to, let's say, somebody now, you know, who knows how to give money to have Yoinim. Um, as I say, Kupa has a, has a fund, Lamana has a fund, I have a fund. Um, I mean, I have my Yoinim that I support. There are Yoinim there are out there, but there are also people that are not Yoinim, and they, they go into the category of Kola Poshet Yodai Noisnim. So we understand here there's two. Dinim. So you, if you have to give it before Purim, give it before Purim, but he has to get it by Purim. If he doesn't use it to buy the falafel, it doesn't make any difference. It, it's, not your, it's not your problem, because you have to give him just enough to buy uh, falafel. I would get a little, I'm just, my, my, I don't know your condition, but I would get a little more generous than the falafel. <laughs> it's a suda. Why? Falafel's not a suda. It's not a suda, it's Purim for sure. It's not, make it a shmarma, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Something more... Um, of the arteries while you're at it.
Um, Shalach Monos or Mishleach Monos? Yeah, sorry. No category. <laughs> no category. <laughs> Just like they're coming for organizations, like the yeshiva or something like that. But it's a minute to give. Yeah. So give. But is it after Jesus? I don't think so, because it's, it's certainly not Matanus of Yoyman, that's for sure. Um, is it, does it go under the category of Kol HaPoshit Yodoy Nois That's not what the Shulchan Aruch means. The Shulchan Aruch means that a nani comes to you, stands at the door like all of us have at our door many times a day, uh, or that it's just come to me. Huh? <laughs> they knock on the door all the time. Um, and you don't know if he's an Ani, he's not an Ani, no stimla, give him. So, by my important Baruch Hashem, there must be um, four or five hundred people that come um, in the course of the day. So, no I give everybody and the people that I know. So, I, I, I give them more. And then I have people um, that gave me for Matanas of Yarnum, just telling you what I do, I have like a separate fun, and there are people that, I, that come, and I know for sure they're Rav Yoinim, so I give them other people's matonos Rav Yoinim, but I check. So those are the, uh, yeshiva is this and that they're take, taking advantage of today, which is good. Look, yeshivas need money. I'm not, I'm certainly not against it. You take it from your maizer, it's a daka. It's a wonderful thing, but it's not the halacha of Purim. It has nothing to do with Purim, that's all I'm saying. Mishlach Manos, I mean, let me just go further. Um, Mishlach Manos is um, different than matonos Rav Yoinim, Matanos of Yoinim, you have to give two of Yoinim. Shalach Manos, you have to give one Shalach Manos. Again, kol amar ba'areza meshubach. You can give as many as you want. A thousand Shalach Manos. But it has to be, um, it has to be Mishlach Manos. So Manos is plural. One, one Mishlach, one Mishlach of two Manos. That's the way it works. As opposed to Matanos le'ev Yoinim. Which is two of Yoinim. This is Mishloach, one Mishloach of, of Manos, of two Manos. What are two Manos? So um, the, the standard rule of thumb is that there should be two brachas in there. Like a bar of greats and a bar of minim is It's not even necessary, Al Piyalach. According, according to the Ramah, you could have two, you could have like um, salami and corned beef. <laughs> um, you could have um, tuna fish and, and potato chips. I mean, there's no, it's, it's not, it could be, as long as they're different things, shtay minim. But the minag has become to try to be medactum to brachas because that, that makes it easier. But what's more important than the two brachas and the two minim is it's really the right thing to, the mishloch manos is meant to enhance the person's um, suda and simcha and purim. So really the right thing is to give somebody something that they can use at the suda. Wine, grape juice, uh, hamantash, I don't know what, but what it, was, it should be something. And it, you, you get, I don't think, um, look, everybody does what they have to do socially, but I don't think you get like more schar if it's like wrapped fancy or something like that. I don't, I don't, th- or, yeah, I don't think so. Um, the, the main thing is that you're, and that, this should be, this is to create, the purpose of this mishlach manos ish lirayehu, is to create connection between people. So that Matanus Lev Yoinim, you're allowed to give anonymously. It might be better to give it anonymously. Mishloch Manos, you're not allowed to give anonymously. You have to, it has to, they have to know who they're getting from because the whole idea of Mishloch Manos is to, is to connect the people together. So, okay. Um, just back with the Matanus Lev Yoinim. Do, if we want to, I mean, I know every year that you send out an email, you know, to cover the expenses of the people that you know right. who really need it. So when do we give it to you? You can give it to me anytime. I put it on the side and I give it out. As and that's because the mitzvah? That's the mitzvah, 100%. I have a special fund. Um, there are many, not just me, but I, I do have a special fund. And um, until we get to about um, $50,000, I didn't run out of if you know, So. So I'm good. Get in there early, and, and you'll get the you'll get the mitzvah. I think actually it might be one of the best ways to do the mitzvah. Um, I don't get a commission on this, obviously, but uh, I think no, because I check. I'm just saying because I check. I don't know what everybody else does. I just know that I check, and and being that I check, I know it's going to people that really need it. And if I can give certain people that need money that are of yonim, I can give them 
um, from everybody, um, 5,000 shekel, 10,000 shekel, pay off their grocery bills so they can make Pesach and real Avionim. So I know that you did a mitzvah. That's, it's, that's the real mitzvah of Matanas Avionim because don't forget, right after Purim starts Pesach and it gets the, the expenses are, are, are crazy. But I checked. That's my, uh, yeah. If you, let's say, the Vidra Mati Shemeshka, you know, we let the Vidra How do you give you a shalim? It's a different day. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. It's not shaykh. Uh, it, it's a different thing. I mean, if you want to give matanas of yarnim, if you're in your shalim, you give it to people in your shalim. It's not because to give people in your neighborhood, because it has to be given to them on Purim. It's not, it's not Purim. Not okay, right. As far as um, Mishlach Malos, I just remember something about that there shouldn't be foods that are, you eat together. Like a sandwich has maybe two types of food, but since you're eating it together, I never heard such a thing in my life. Might be true, never heard it. <laughs> I think a sandwich is perfect. A falafel. <laughs> 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 In general, but a lot of the money I give out are people in America, right? So uh, they're, they're giving overseas. Look, look, make sure that everybody in Beit Shemesh is taken care of. That's, that's the truth. Um, and they're not. They're not with, you know, the, even the Kupa Shaltzdaka and, and the Manachai and all these wonderful, wonderful organizations, I support them completely, but um, they, they don't, they, 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 they can't, they're not in a position to give people ad kedai that all their needs are taken care of. <laughs> But that's not, so they'll give, they give 500 shekel. But, you know, person's ex, expenses are, 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 you know, have to, people have to pay for food, they have to pay rent, they have to pay. And, uh, you know, just, just a couple of days ago, um, a man came over to me, uh, you know, well, right, he was in the house, uh, well-dressed, you know, uh, professional-looking guy. He was laid off from his job here in Israel and um, three months off over on his rent. Um, and, and he couldn't pay his rent, and he was being evicted from his, uh, you know, this is not a person I know, he never asked me for money before. I was able to help him, you know, you know the, the, there's no, there isn't a kupa that I know of that can say, okay, so I, I, paid, the th- I paid the three months, well, altogether paid, I think, three months rent, and, you know, so he's there, you know, in three months we'll worry about it again, looking for a job, getting a job. There are real, there are real things right here, and you don't even know, like people sitting, Right with us are, are, you know, there are real things. Um, let me finish. I don't want to go over time too much. Um, hearing the Megillah. So again, the, the um, hearing the Megillah, there's three parts to it. Um, one part of it is there's three parts to that mitzvah of hearing the Megillah. One of them is um, Pursume Nisa. Like, you have to get it out there that we were victorious over evil. That's the Prisume Nisa that we have. Like Hanukkah, Purim. It has to be public. We have to, we have to stand for something, and that is that we're eradicating evil, and that, that's, that's one part of it, Prisume Nisa. Um, another part of it is um, wiping out Amalek. That's a, another part of it. And the third part of it is that you have to hear the Megillah. Just, you have to hear the story, and you have to review the story. Um, the, the, the reading it in public is not necessarily a, a woman's mitzvah, the Mishnah Baruch says, meaning um, it's not a woman's mitzvah because of, in general, in halacha, public things for women are, are not um, chayiv. A woman's allowed to say, I'd rather just be home, I'd rather be quiet, and I'd rather, you know, uh, I'd rather be, uh, it's, it's a type of its neos. I suppose if you're going here and you're going there, so go to Shul and here to Megillah, but it's not, a, not the same chiyuv. At least in the time of Chazal, they didn't mean women necessarily with this, so it's a good thing to come. Um, in terms of Amalek, we spoke about it. There's not a, necessarily the same chiyuv on women as there is on men to do a public display of Mechiyas Amalek. Here the Megillah, women have to hear the Megillah just like men. And the Gemara says, why do they have to do it like men? Is it a mitzvah, a mitzvah shazman grama? Why do they have to do it like men? Because of Esther. Esther was the hero, heroine of the story, and it doesn't make any sense that women shouldn't be chayiv. If, if, imagine Esther would have said, I have no chayiv. 
says, <laughs> so we wouldn't be here, right? Like the, the, you can't, you can't, you can't. So women have to hear the Megillah, and therefore, because of this distinction, if you come to Shul and you hear the Megillah, this is fantastic. But if you don't come to Shul and hear the Megillah, um, and you're only hearing the Megillah for yourself, the brach is different, because for men the brach is al mikra Megillah, and for women, if it's just women, it's lishmoa Megillah, lishmoa Megillah. Because the whole mitzvah is, is the is the shmia. So, um, and by the way, women can make this bracha, and um, I don't want to get in trouble, but women can lane the Megillah for, for other women. Um, it's not Nahug here, probably, but um, it, it's, it, it can be a women's thing. But the bracha is lishmoa mikra Megillah. The, the chumra is, if you're in such a situation, that each woman makes the bracha. Because it's a big question whether one woman could be motzi another woman with a bracha. So the, the arevus of our grizim and our it might not be there. So so women should make the bracha. Best thing is to come to shul and to and at shul you can you can be yotze with the men and your makayim um, all of all of the um, mitzvahs. Um, the Suda Spurim, I'll just finish with that. So there's a Chiyav of Suda. So Suda is like this. Suda has to be, a, um, first of all, you don't say the Suda Spurim at night. That means either night. <laughs> not, the night be, not the night of Purim, and not if you eat the main part of your Suda, if you eat it too late, where the main part of your suda is going into the nighttime of after Purim, meaning even though it's Shushan Purim, but that's when Shushan Purim starts, but it's not Purim for us. So the Iker of the Suda, meaning the main course of the Suda, has to be on Purim during the day after Yadav and Shafras. From that, from that point, the, the, the complete flexibility. You can, you can have the Suda's Purim um, any place from the after Shafras until Shkia to eat the main chorus of the tefillah. The, the halacha is, what says in Shulchan Aruch, is what should you eat? So barring um, uh, um, individual circumstances, so ein simcha ela bebaser v'yayin. Now that doesn't mean, and I want to get back to what we were talking about before with the, with the schnapps, that doesn't mean that basar, you know, meat and yayin make you happy. But basar and yayin is a way to celebrate happiness. That's the, the, the way we celebrate happiness. Uh, and, and whenever there's a happy occasion, lechatchila, there should be baser v'yayin. But here it says um, on Shulchan Aruch that the Suda Spurim has to be baser v'yayin. Rav Moshe Feinstein writes that this baser v'yayin, you're not yotze with scotch or with bourbon or with liqueur or with vodka. It's v'yayin. <laughs> yayin is yayin. Yayin misamach levav enosh. Yain, Yain has a, something to do with happiness. It has to do with the Beis HaMikdash. You know, when they did, um, when they used Yain in the Beis, ha, Beis HaMikdash, they couldn't replace it with Johnny Walker or something. It had to be, had to be Yain. Um, and Basar is Basar. Now, there are people that are, um, that don't want to eat meat, so, that, so then it's not a simcha for you. That's not the way that you celebrate. So eat whatever it is. It has to be festive. Um, and festive, L'chatchila says the Mishnah Bura, should be at least two people. And this gets back to what we were talking about. It's so interesting. Matan, these, the poor me can't do yourself hardly because you can't give matanas of yarnim to yourself no matter how poor you are. And even a poor person has to give matanas of yarnim. You have to give. You need somebody else to give to. Mishloch manos, you have to give out of your family. You have to give it out. Um, I think it's a good thing um, that at least one Mishloch manos uh, husband gives, another one a wife gives. I don't think one's most of the other from family paper. I don't think that works. At least one. You could do a lot of shalachmanas that way, but at least one should be an individual thing. I, I got, um, somebody is an avel, la aleinu, somebody's ba'avelus. Um, so an avel you're not allowed to give a gift to. So that's not your choice of Mishlach Manus. If you think they're going to feel bad, so explain to them that you're not giving Mishlach Manus because they're an Avil. <laughs> they're not going to feel so bad. Um, they should learn the Halacha. And an Avil gives only one Mishlach Manus. So if you're not getting Mishlach Manus from somebody, you usually get Mishlach Manus from because they're an Avil. And they're an Avil, so you have to be understanding of the fact that they're Bavel. So they give one. The Halacha is an Avil gives one Mishlach Manus and gets none. 
if, if, if you get, so you get, they, they, they get. I mean, but you, they're not supposed to be getting gifts and they're not supposed to be getting Shalom Aleichems. That's the Hawacha of Avelis. Um, so that's Shalach Manas. I was, the, the Suda also, so I just think like you need, you need for everything. You can't do Mikra Megillah really on your own. Um, you, you need L'Chatzchila, a minion, and uh, at least somebody read it, and, you know, read it and listen. Um, Lishmoa, you have to hear it, so it's, um, you can't do Shalach Manas on your own, you can't do Matanas Lev Yoinim on your own, and you really can't be happy on your own. It, it's um, Simcha, Simcha's, because, because then the light has stopped, yeah? <laughs> the light has stopped. The whole idea uh, is, to, is to share it, share it with somebody else. So, I want to end on time. to simcha, um, to the real simcha, deep simcha, not just balagan, not uh, a lack of sobriety, but simcha of understanding. Uh, we have a reason why Hashem created us, and we have a reason for being here. And uh, you know, sometimes you ask somebody else, "Why am I here?" <laughs> you know, a lot of people it's hard to see for yourself why you're created, and probably. Um, you're doing so much for so many people, but for, somehow we don't see it in ourselves. I don't know why. So ask somebody. I'll tell you. I mean, make sure it's a good person. <laughs> so, you know, good question. <laughs> why are you here? But, you wanna, you know, but there, there, we have a reason. But the reason is to be able to take the kav of the or Hashem. This is the reason. Whatever prism that light came through, whatever color it is, whatever my thing is, and be able to give that to whoever is around me. That's why, that's how we bring Hashem's Malchus into this world. And that's how we get to be Basimcha, Chag Sameach, Purim Sameach. I have a very interesting minhag in Yerushalayim. A book that comes out on Friday, like this year. They carry on the Suda Purim into Shabbos. Yeah, but the Iker, the Mana Ikari has to be eaten before. There is a minhag. There is a minhag to do that. We don't my reference. We also don't my reference. You know, let me, let, me, let me leave you with this one thought. Can I say one more thought? I'm over time. You can leave if you need to. But I just, I just want to, something I've been thinking about. It was talking about Simcha and finding my, you know, everybody knows that Esther, Esther, um, Mordechai came to Esther and told her to go to Achashverosh and plead on behalf of the Jews, tell them you're a Jew and tell them that the Jews are being oppressed by Haman and he should free us and take away the death sentence. Everybody knows. And the, the story in the Megillah is that Esther hesitated. She hesitated. Um, I don't, it's not the Minhag to go to the king this way. You know, you don't just go when you ask things. And, and Mordechai gave her Musr, right? That al Tahrishi. Don't, don't uh, hold, don't be quiet. Mi odeya, who knows? Imleis kazos he got the malchus. Maybe this is your thing. Like maybe this is your mitzvah. So it's an interesting thing because mi odeya, like who, who knows that, that, everybody knows. <laughs> everybody knows that Esther, Hashem put Esther in the battles of the king to save the Jewish people. Everybody knows, all of history knows, but she didn't know. <laughs> she didn't know. And I just want to explain something. I want to just make this, that, this whole story for one minute. Very, very real for you. Um, Esther, this was not like a plot of Mordechai. Esther, you know, you'll go, you'll join the, the government, and then you'll help the Jews. This wasn't like a plant. You know, Esther was like planted in the Beis HaChashverosh, and then she got scared. What it was, it, it's clear to me, that what it was is that Esther was a very, very, it was Mordechai's niece. She was a hush of a person in, in Persia, very hush of a person in Persia. She was a very beautiful person. And she, she um, ended up being a very, very prominent, influential, wealthy um, Jew in the base Hamelech. I mean, you could think of all, your, all the examples, but this, this can be just a very, very wealthy influencer, an influencer, a center of influence, um, and found herself in, in the Beis HaMelech, and there she was waited on head and toe, she was taken care of, she, was, um, she, she had access to the king. She was just, she, all of a sudden, she's, she's, a, she's a, uh, a queen. Esther is a queen. And Mordechai said to her, 
you should speak to Achashverosh about the situation of the Jewish people. And she said what every influencer says <laughs> when you tell them this. You say, you know, it's a little naively, um, and I don't know, you know, this is not the way. Let's say somebody was very close, um, has a close position close to the president of the United States. So you say to them, or her, um, listen, go speak about the Jewish people. No, this is not the way it works. There's, there's, a, there's a way, there's, there's a, um, you know, there's protocol, there's formalities, there's ways that it works. Uh, let me tell you that, you know, um, I got my job on the condition that I'm not lobbying for any particular race. I have to be above all races. Um, this is not good for business. There's all kinds of things. People have a million reasons why they don't want to do it. And Esther had a million reasons, it says right in the Megillah, why she didn't want to do it. It just wasn't right. But this wasn't like the moment. Her whole situation was she was the Gavir in the house of the Melech. That's what she was. She was the, the hush of a person in the house of Melech. And Mordechai told her that why do you think your life ended up like this? You see, you can't, I'll talk Rishi with him, that. You can't, a person has to look at their whole life. It's not that moment, you know, there's a moment, a pusik about Esther, a moment of tension. No, it was the whole, you're, you, Esther, you're, you're beautiful. You want all the beautiful, the, the beauty pageants. So, Shisha Chadoshim B'Shem and Amor. Shisha Chadoshim Bab Samim. Achashverus somehow likes you better than he likes everybody else, and he could have everybody he wants. He wants. Uh, you, you, you're influential with the money. You're influential with the, with the government, with the laws. You're influential. Why? So this is the, the point. It's a much bigger a much bigger issue than the issue of that pusset. We have to ask ourselves, why are we in the position that we're in? And it's for one, the, the answer is very simple. Mordechai taught. The answer is very simple. The, the, why are we in the position we're in? Be, to, to spread Hashem's light into the world. So Esther, get to work. Don't make up excuses. And everybody's hiding. It's, it's not just Esther's hiding. Everybody's hiding from their obligations to do good. It's not about a moment. It's about my life. The whole reason why Hashem gave me the life that I have is to be able to, to, to do for others and to, and to give life. I think that is the mature understanding of the story of the Megillah's Esther in a nutshell. And I wish you all a good tvach and a good morning.